What's going on, Rob? Here we got a pure turbo swap going in today. You heard right. Yeah, we do a lot of pure turbo swaps at the shop. This one, for example, we're doing on an N54. It's a 135i. We've actually maintained and, and worked on and done several mods on this car through many years now. Uh, it's been pretty much a customer of ours for, uh, I want to say, at least seven or eight years now. But he's finally making the jump to pure turbos. Uh, unfortunately, his stock turbos failed on him. I should say one of them failed on him. And they pretty much started smoking out of the exhaust. Whether it's because tuning, too much boost, who knows. Uh, but he looked at this as an opportunity to get into to an upgraded set of turbos that he's wanted for some time. I've already started working on the top of that car. Everything on the top end's kind of already been removed. I'll show you a couple of the items that we've kind of pulled off the car, just getting ready to get the turbos off. Uh, this is gonna be the intake. So this customer is running the ECS carbon fiber uh, dual cone intake setup. Uh, we pulled this charge pipe off. He's running just an aluminum charge pipe with uh, the factory diverter valves or DVs. The reason we pulled this is because uh, he's gonna be upgrading to a blow-off valve. So we're gonna put a new charge pipe and blow-off valve in his car. And we're gonna go with the, the tile blow-off valve. This customer used to have uh, inlets, which was just for the stock turbos. Uh, we pulled the original ones because for the pure turbos, we are gonna be going with a bigger inlet. Uh, so these are like the 1.75 inch stock size. And we are gonna be upgrading to the two inch one. So unfortunately we can't use these original inlets anymore. Uh, we pulled the vacuum canisters, uh, the front snorkel, uh, the boost solenoids and the bracket that they sit on, uh, as well as the fan down here. And I still have a few more things to pull out of the car. For example, the intercooler right here. Uh, I still got to get this puppy out. I still have a couple, or one of the down pipes, I should say, that I'm about to pull out in a second. Actually, let me just go ahead and get this up now so it doesn't fall while we're shooting this video. But, uh, you guys will see me make some progress on pulling whatever's left that I do got to get out, which will be, once again, the intercooler, the outlet. I'll pull off a couple brackets, and then we'll get some water pipes off, and then obviously get to the meat and the potatoes, aka the turbos. Hopefully that gives you a good rundown of where we're at and you guys will enjoy the show. Cut to it, Nate. Get the motor mount out. The passenger side motor mount, out of here. Out of here. Oh man, it's a mess. It's raining, coolant. Just got the water pipe out, a lot more to go. Oh man, Nate, can you help me? <laughs> Just joking. Nice ETS intercooler. Coming on out, coming on out. Quick curls. <laughs> yeah, sneak a couple. No more curls for me. Oops, where'd that come from? All right, outlet's coming out, Nate. Hoppa! Turbo coming out, Nate. Turbo coming out. 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 Turbo number one. Out. Turbo number one, start. All right, turbo number two, come turbo on. Turbo number two coming out. Turbo your head, fellas. Oh, well, looks like we got two of them. Oh, they're so cute. Oh, look what we found. Nate, found some turbos. What the hell? So I figure uh, we'll walk you through a couple of the common options that Pure Turbo offers for the N54 BMW engines. Over here on your guys' left-hand side, uh, we have the Pure 600 option. It comes with an aftermarket casted manifold. Obviously, you know, much bigger wheels and uh, you know, able to make quite a bit more jam than the factory setups. They are made overseas and they do use some of the components overseas. Uh, to comprise the end result or the final product. Over here on the right hand side, this is actually Pure Turbo's US made stuff. Uh, they do have two options that are gonna be, you know, in my opinion, above the Pure 600 option. So one of them will be the DDs or the daily drivers, which make about 600 wheel horsepower. Uh, the second one that we got right here is gonna be the high flows or the HFs, which make about 700 wheel horsepower. Uh, there's three options when it comes to the stage two variants. They do offer stage one variants, but for sake of this video, I'm gonna leave it out. Pure 600s are the cheapest out of the whole batch. They do make about 600, just like the name implies too. But unfortunately, you know, sometimes we do see some reliability issues with them. You know, these manifolds are not as good as the quality of the OEM Boysen manifolds. Don't forget, they're made with 100% pure Chinesium. So unless you're on an extreme budget, it doesn't make 
the most sense for the amount of labor, the time, the headaches involved, at least just in our opinion. Great turbos, it just has to be the right match for the right buyer. The two other variants that we mentioned for the, the US made stuff is gonna be the DDs, the daily drivers, and then the HFs for the high flows. The pure you know, DDs and the high flows, they do reuse the factory manifold, hence why they require core fees. And so when you send your original one in as a core fee, they'll go ahead and rebuild it, but they'll go ahead and reuse that original factory OEM manifold. Both of these we are huge believers in. You get good bang for the buck, but more importantly, they're pretty reputable. They have a good you know, track record when it comes to reliability, longevity. We do run them on a couple of our shop cars as well. And we've installed countless sets, hundreds of sets of these uh, with very limited issues on kind of their track record. So we do like the DDs that kind of, like I said, make around 600 horsepower. And uh, we, we do like the high flow options as well for the N54. Unfortunately, we're not the biggest advocate of these, once again, for the Pure 600s, unless you're on a more budget-style build, which sometimes we just feel that, you know, about $1,000, give or take, in the cost of parts isn't going to be the end of the world or, or the biggest cost difference. If you're already spending two to, to $5,000, you know, making the, the transition or going with the Stage 2 setup with inlets, outlets, the turbos, fluids, the install kit, you know, an $800 or $1,000 difference isn't going to be the end of the world. So try to steer towards the US made stuff on the right hand side. Awesome pure turbos with hey, awesome compressor. These are the high Man, flows. Josh, These are like the, the PERS, PER 800s. What kind of sound do they make? <laughs> <laughs> oh, Nate, you caught me. Yeah, we got to take all the lines off. Working on the oil drains right now. We're going to take off the oil feeds. We will take off the coolant in and the coolant out. And uh, once we do that, we can get all the lines cleaned up, get them all prepped for the new turbos, AKA uh, the upgrade, the pure turbos. Now that we actually got this out, let's see what was going on with this turbo. It's actually this one, the front one that failed. Uh, as you guys can see, it's kind of all coated lightly in oil. Uh, it's a little hard to see, but you can definitely see oil kind of coming out of the center section, even past that wheel. You guys can actually see in this downpipe where it's all kind of lightly coated in a bunch of like, golden oil and all the way to the end you can see a lot more uh, that's not normal it's not supposed to be like that turbo didn't have a good day and now it's owner's responsibility to make it right this guy <laughs> got this guy pure turbos he's gonna be a happy car so now that we kind of explained why that turbo failed I'm gonna go ahead and get all the lines off on these twin turbos to clean up all the lines with nice chemicals that are bad for our hands. If we're gonna spend all this time removing the turbos, we wanna make sure that we can look at leaks if they were to happen. Uh, but more importantly, we want the customer to actually enjoy his new set of turbos. And allows us to warranty and keep an eye on our work if there's any connection points that are leaking or uh, issues that kind of arise down the road, we can obviously stay ahead of that curve. Right now I'm just wiping them all down with chemicals to get any of the residual oils and nastiness off them. And then we'll go ahead and clean the insides with uh, you know, a bunch of brake cleaner. That way they get super clean on the inside just as much as they are getting cleaned up on the outside. Up. All right, so as you guys saw, we just kind of cleaned up the lines, getting them prepped for the new O-rings and seals that we're going to be putting on them. Uh, as I was doing that, I did notice uh, something that I was not too happy to see. This is actually going to be the front turbo drain line, and if you guys kind of look right there, uh, it definitely has some sort of a kinking going on or it kind of necks down. Uh, the braided portion that has the flex in this line, unfortunately, looks like it's collapsing on the actual hose. Being that we were just mentioning and talking about uh, and showing you guys the front downpipe, the front turbo that had kind of oil going through, 
uh, are, are failing from the internal CHRA. A, a big reason on why that could happen is not having proper drainage on one of the turbo oil lines, which uh, essentially gives it lubricity and cools down the turbo, keeps it alive and keeps it happy. If it's unable to drain or there's disruption in the flow on the drain, it's unfortunately not going to be able to push oil through at the rate or the volume that it needs to keep that turbo alive. So being that these turbos were run at about, you know, maybe 19, 20 PSI stock turbos, just full bolts on and running on E85, this could be very likely uh, the cause of that failure. So we're gonna go ahead and uh, pretty much toss this line because it's no good anymore. I have some other lines that we're gonna go ahead and order from the dealership. That way we can go ahead and replace that and we don't allow history to repeat itself, especially on uh, something that's gonna be more expensive like the Pure Turbo. We'll go ahead and get these lines installed on the Pure Turbo now and you guys will join. Baby, I'm gonna install these puppies. Her turbo is going in. Yes, sir. Most exciting time of the night. You know what I mean? We will start with the front turbo. Align this son of a gun. Put her in here into her new home. And the rear turbo. And for her. Get up here too. <laughs> all right, I think that's all we're gonna get right now.